Many videos ago, you may have seen me review the Reximex Ixia ball pop, and I thought it was all right. It had a few little gripes, I ain't gonna lie. Um, I found the magazines were, it just felt like when I was loading it, I was damaging the pellets. It just wasn't really refined. Maybe it was just a bit of a lemon gun that I had, I don't know. But I have got the latest version and is it is the carbine version in FDE. Check that out. So I thought I would bring it to the rack table having tested this thing and put several hundred pellets through it. And I've got to say, I'm pretty impressed. It has worked really, really well. Right, let's throw out some specs on this little ball pop and we'll get stuck in. So this is the Gen 2 Reximex Ixia. In other countries they have different names. I think it's the throne in other countries. I can't remember now. There's, it's totally confusing when you go on Reximex's website. So this is the Ixia. It is a tactical style is what they call it in FDE. It is regulated, but it has not got the adjustable regulator on UK versions, okay? And this is a sub-12 version. This is in 22 caliber. It is a side lever, pre-charged pneumatic or PCP. It's got a 300cc carbon fiber wrapped aluminum bottle there. It has a bit of a plenum going on there. FX call them plenums, but this one's called a pre-chamber. So that's basically like your your gunpowder that sends the barrel, that sends the pellet down the barrel. That's your air chamber that is released to release the shot. It has a dual rail, which I quite like. So you can chuck on uh, anything that's uh, Picatinny compatible or dovetail compatible. So you see it there, you've got both, which is cool. I do like to see that. One of my gripes about this rifle and the, the last, um, Reximex that I had, probably the last few Reximexes I have. And I know it's difficult, but the gauges are just a little, you know, one's that way up and one's that way up. It's like, oh, at least just get them level. I know, I know, but that's just my little gripe. End of the barrel is threaded in half inch UNF, so you can throw on a mod if you want. You do get hard case with it, which uh, they're all right. Those catches on the hard case just do my head in, but apart from that, it's not bad. 875 millimeters total length, weighing in at 3.75 kilos and approximately 11.3 foot pounds of energy. That's pretty, pretty much it for your specs. Just in case you are wondering, I was running this thing and I've still got it on an immersive optics prisms, prism scope, when I can say it, prism, 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 prism scope. That is so cool. It works so well on a little rifle like this, keeping the weight down and keeping it ultra compact. Works, works really well. That is the immersive optics. That's a 10 by 40 and it was just really, really cool. Now, like I said, I've got a couple of gripes. Let's just shift them now and let's get them out of the way. The gauges, the way they're a little bit skewiff. I was gonna use another phrase then. Um, beginning with P and ending it up. Um, but yeah, you can live with that, I guess. And the other one is, I just can't, I can't like this safety catch. I'm sorry, I just can't do it. So that's safety off and that's safety on and it physically stops the trigger. I just don't like it, sorry. Can't, can't, can't like it, but I can put up with it. It just means that you like that when, you, when you're shooting and then you drop that up to, <sighs> no. I like, the idea is cool, you know, uh, I love innovation, but I just don't like it. Sorry, that's me. Right then, so taking it from the stock end, you have a rubberized butt pad there, which ain't bad. It is adjustable by pressing this button and you can slide it up and down, but I can't do it one-handed because I'm obviously holding the gun. 
you can turn your power up and down. I think that is like your hammer spring. I didn't really mess with it. I just left it on full power because this is only sub 12. Um, that is to adjust. I think that is to take your barrel out if you want to take your barrel out. Again, I didn't really mess with it. I just used it stock straight out of the box. This is polymer. This bit is, I like this cheap piece. So it's not bad. And in fact, I have done exactly what I did on the last Ixia video. There is actually a cheap piece that you get in the box and I've not put it on. I'm pretty, in fact, I'm 100% I haven't. But I might be lying. Oh, all right then, I stand corrected. Let's have a look, I'm looking in the box already. Uh, okay, I'm sure that was on another Ixia where there was actually like a cheap piece that fitted on. Maybe it's not the case on this one. That's weird. But, well anyway, it was comfy enough to shoot, me being a lefty as well. You know, not, I had no problems with this little, little gun at all. I love the look of it, it looks really cool in the FDE. Obviously, it's not a short stubby barrel, it's a ball pup, so you, your barrel is that length. Okay, barrel length. Did it give you barrel length? Uh, let's just get my tape measure and we'll give you the barrel length. It is, it's a 500 mil barrel. That is 500 mil barrel on this little compact version. Like I mentioned earlier, you've got a rail here. Um, it looks like it's got a bit of MOA built in by the looks of it, looking at the, uh, the slight drop on there. Uh, it is a combination of dovetail and Picatinny rail, okay? Shrouded barrel, I love that. And threaded to throw on a mod in half inch UNF. I just, as you can see in the footage, just used it as it was. Um, it wasn't mega loud, but you know, if you're hunting with it, then you're gonna throw on a mod, I'm sure, but you wanna keep that overall length short so you see you need something like nice and short and stubby and effective that's what i i do myself really smooth to cock and load everything's solid nothing i had no problems whatsoever i didn't manage to double feed it not that i tried just worked really well really really well that's the other side um ergonomics yeah pretty good um the magazines are, they're all right. They're not bad. Uh, again, no problems with the magazine. I'll just show you, I may as well get the magazine out of the box. I thought I got one ready, but you know me guys, I don't prepare for these videos. Since when have I done that? In nearly 13 years. So here is, here's the bits that you get in, oh, that is in there, the loose one is. Well, in the box you get all your filler bits, you get a few bits, few little seals as well. Uh, you get a single shot thingy there. So that's nice. A few Allen keys. You get, you get a, an actual data sheet as well telling you about its energy. So that saves me chrono in it. So there, this is this actual gun. Okay, bullet weight or, or pellet weight, 15.9 grains. So I have got some, I've got two lots of pellets that are about that weight anyway. So there is your readings for this particular gun. Your magazine is this type, so cassette style, so you have to wind it around like that. Hold that, put your finger over it, put a pellet in, and then start filling it all the way up, and then it's under spring tension. The magazines, have got a uh, last shot stop and you load them from that side. I think, I, no, I've got that. Oh, I've got to figure this out, guys, from that way. And if you're a lefty like me, they're not too bad. They're not too intrusive. So that's what it looks like when it's in. And it weren't really sort of in my face at all, to be fair, so. Let's just take that out. We'll close it up. That's cocked now. So what we'll do while it is cocked, we'll give that trigger a pull. 
just to see what it was doing. Felt all right, the trigger. There's your safety lock. So I've got to knock the safety off and let's give this trigger a pull, see what she was doing. Felt all right, actually. Okay, I haven't cocked it. Try again, try again. There we go. Three pounds, 8.9 ounces on the trigger. So not a bad trigger at all. Not bad. Bit of Picatinny rail at the bottom. So if you want to throw on a tripod or, or whatever tripod, bipod even, maybe get an adapter for a tripod. Not that you really need it, this short little thing. For a bipod there, um, like I said, 300cc carbon uh, fiber wrapped bottle with Reximex's own branding on there, which is kind of nice. I kind of like that. AR-15 shaped, I was going to say style, but shaped pistol grip. Really comfortable to shoot. Really nice. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. I think you can, if you want, swap that round to full lefty because there is a blanking plate there. I didn't, I didn't want to sort of just mess about with it. This, by the way, is kindly on loan from Livens Gun Shop. Let's talk about accuracy because I was impressed with this little gun, accuracy, and I used five different types of pellets. So here are my results. Da, 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 da. Let me show you the first one, which was H&N. I've got these mixed up, right? So Barracuda is this lot here and vice versa. So the first one was H&N uh, Field Target Trophy, which are them, 14.66 grains. I didn't write the grain weight on, on there. So that is them, okay. H&N Field Target Trophy, a good test bed uh, pellet. Check these out, where are we? So starting from here, three shot groups. Not bad, not bad, brand new rifle, not really been running. Okay, and then the next ones were H&N Barracuda 15s, which are these, these are 15.89 grains. Show you them. That was them. And results were these. Three shot groups again, 30 yards, by the way, guys. Finger is there for scale. Not bad. Then it went a little bit wrong using Barracuda Greens. These are 12.96 grain. These are the lead-free, non-toxic, shiny, shiny pellets. These went all over the place. This rifle did not like these at all. Look at, the, look at this group. Three shot group there, one, two, three. Then on this target, one, two, three. That target, one, two, three. Uh, this target was down here, and that target was there. God knows what went on there. Very, very strange. Then we went on to the JSB Exact Jumbo, the RS ones, 13.43 grains. That is them right there. They weren't bad at all. Weren't bad at all. Uh, JSB Exact Jumbo, so look at the group there. Three shot groups, 30 yards. Ignore that, that was from the, those um, barracuda greens. Three shot group, three shot group, three shot group. Look at that. Oh my God, three shot group. And then the last one was RWS Superfield, 15.9 grains. That's them. Not bad at all. In between pellets, to, you know, where I was putting sort of a mag through, um, just on my little gong, just to uh, get that pellet, get the barrel accustomed to that pellet, so to speak. 
So that is decent accuracy. Just doesn't like those Barracuda greens. So you've got to feed this lead. Don't give it unleaded. Don't put unleaded in the tank in this because it doesn't seem to like it. So very impressive with the accuracy with a prism scope as well. That was quite, quite impressive. So let me show you the box. You get a hard case with this rifle, with these awful, and I said this in previous Reximex videos, these uh, clips to put the box together, they're just, oh, they're just a nightmare. Just a nightmare, I don't like them at all. What's in the box? You get two magazines, you get that stuff that I showed you earlier. You get a hat as well. We've uh, Reximex's uh, concrete company on there. Yes, old joke from the uh, last video. Manual is pretty good. It's colorful, it's in color. Tells you everything you need, all your do's and don'ts, how to load it. Pretty glossy as well. Not bad, how to adjust the uh, butt pad as well. How to adjust the trigger, explode diagrams. What I like to see as well. So yeah, not bad at all. These Turkish guns are coming on. I've got to say, they really are. They really are. You cannot knock them. Yeah, I know years ago they were a bit uh, iffy, um, but this is really good. I've been really impressed with it, with it. Accuracy straight out of the box. I cannot fault it whatsoever. It looks cool. I would quite happily use this as a little sort of farmyard gun, you know, um, rat basher uh, in barns, you know, up close and personal sort of feral pigeons, that sort of stuff. Cracking little bit kit, but ah, I just don't like that safety. Oh, I don't like it. I just can't get on with that. I don't know what it is. It just, don't know. Don't know what it is, but hey ho. But what a great looking little rifle. It is a cool looking rifle in this coloration. If you were to get one, I, see, I highly recommend getting an, an immersive optics um, prism scope for it. It's just spot on for this little, this little air rifle. Anyway, guys, I am gonna leave it at that. Thanks for watching. That is Rack and Load. See ya.